Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. And of course, not really. I'm sitting with my, with my other friend, my other. Can you be my other friend? Mm-hmm. Not my best friend. I think I'm still a best friend. So, OK, so just I, different capacity. I mean, I think that that that's the debate then. Right. Can you have more than one best friend? Yes. OK. You're like I'm, my female version. Yeah, of I was going to say I'm female, so it's different. Well, you got to have one of each. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Is it? It is now. I guess we'll get into it because actually on today's podcast, we have a couple best friends, but we'll get into that in a sec. Um, I think you can have many. Yeah, many, many. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, before we uh, jump into the podcast, I want to do a big, big, massive shout out to Maria and to Julie for uh, Beauty Gives Back. Last weekend, you and I were um, were at Beauty Gives Back and it was just uh, like, it's kind of a magical experience. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that was your first time going, so. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Overwhelming at first and then settled in and it was great. Overwhelming just because there was a lot of people yeah. staring at us. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's always that stuff when you kind of do these events. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. It, it's kind of cool because it's a little less of a hair show and a little bit more of like a conference, I would say. But you know, there's felt, a lot of panels and stuff. Yeah, felt that like profound um, people looking up to you especially and like wanting you to give really good information i think i felt that pressure too for you really yeah I, that's funny because i didn't feel pre- I, i'm glad I didn't you feel did. that pressure at all i'm glad you didn't because i would have had to control that anxiety for oh, you really that's crazy <laughs> but i yeah. definitely got that that yeah. i think that's why i felt overwhelmed at first and it took me a minute to like settle in i mean i guess with that answer we are best friends because you know only a best friend would like eat your anxiety i mean i felt know? a lot of that that pressure yeah really i didn't mm-hmm. feel any of that you know what though in a negative I way no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not taking it that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I didn't feel that because I get so heady before I get on stage anyway. So that definitely would have just like added a lot of of of, of stuff on the day. But um, the my my one rec- request, Mariah, if you're listening to this, is please put me on earlier in the day because I'm not worth a shit until I actually get on stage. Like I want to enjoy the event, but I get so heady that I can't enjoy the event because mm-hmm. I'm all like manic and like ADD and out and like also running around. why I didn't tell you me feeling that because. <laughs> because of that yes because then you would have been like oh shit i didn't even think about that yeah <laughs> and that one just what i added it, on, on one hand it's really cool to be put in that in that position mm-hmm. because like the, the, there's a certain amount whether whether justified or not there's a certain amount of trust in that you know like trusting with the weekend trusting with the um the, the basically anyone that's listening in i moderated a barber um a, a barber panel which i thought was the best panel of the day but you know i was on the other side of the stage at that point so <laughs> but no no I, I so i moderate and for some reason somehow although i've been a colorist for so many years you know the, I, I think it's the beard they i get positioned as a barber all the definitely. time definitely no 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 hate on that just you know it's just it's funny that i'm Having the one that hair since 92 <laughs> <laughs> with clippers horseshoes it's so crazy that's wild so anyways a uh, big shout out and thank you to beauty gives back um it happens in chicago every september um if you're listening in, you should definitely be in the room it's a very very cool room to be in there's so much information and um we actually got to meet a couple I, we met jason yates who is the president of oh, paul yeah. mitchell um which was very very sweetheart cool. he's such a great guy mm-hmm. and, yeah. yeah on that note i've got to send him the robert chromin's podcast Mark that. Mark that for later. Okay. So on today's podcast, we have uh, two of our, our who, who've become actually pretty good friends of ours um, uh, over the last year or so. Um, uh, it, it's Amanda and Jamie Rourke. And uh, Amanda and I actually met, golly, 2021, we met in in, in the desert. You know what's amazing? We, so we met at Hair Love Retreat at, in Zion. And what's incredible, I'm going to get emotional, hold on. Whew. What's incredible is that that weekend... I didn't know what to expect at all, but what I've gained out of it is some really great friendships that came about that weekend, you know, between Amanda and Lindsay and I mean, Olivia and I, we, we bonded a little bit tighter there. It's just, it, it's pretty incredible how the friendships that, that, that again, going into that weekend, you never know what the other end of that's going to be, 
but but you know there, there's definitely been some good friendships that have that have been forged um from that weekend i think there's a vulnerability cool. that you all experience being there together that just connects you for life it's like that's it, how it is like the relationships that you've taken away from that it's like people that are just so genuine to their core and just people you'd hang out with anyway you know what i mean yeah. you just found each other there and i think that, that like uh, it very much and not to make it too hyperbolic or anything but uh, it very much felt like uh when i was like in boot camp and like that you you have the shared ex well you have the shared experience where there's like there's a lot of like I mean, with hair, there was a lot of trauma in boot camp, but with in hair love, it was like, and what I'm like, I know, right? well, well, in the sense that like there was trauma bonding and there was trauma like figuring it out at hair yeah. love, and then there's also that same connection where like, oh, we did this together, oh, right, like we did like we we healed together, yeah. and there's also and, and that's a forever bond too. That's cool, right? It, it it's crazy. I mean, I don't again, I would have never anticipated doing that going into hair love, but that's do you it. still talk to any of your buddies from boot camp? I don't actually. Um, I have there's one guy that, that that I feel particularly connected with, uh, Chris Basico, but I uh, I haven't really talked to him in probably 20 years or so. Um, just you know, sometimes you know, just life happens too. You know, life sure. goes on, life moves on, and all that good stuff. But anyway, should we get in? Yeah. Okay. So on today's podcast again, it's Amanda and Jamie Warwick, and 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 they've done some uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, we definitely want to talk to them today about. Or hybrid salon, but it's not a hybrid salon like you're thinking. You know, it's a different set. It's a different type of hybrid salon. So should we bring I feel like we should also apologize now that it's just going to sound like a bunch of friends chatting. So it's not going to be the normal format. We're all just going to be laughing and giggling the whole time. I think. Well, yeah. Well, and well, that's why it's important that we have them on. You know, because you know, every one of our conversations sounds like dinner. With I hope this isn't a boring conversation. Right? Otherwise, people are going to be like, "You have the most boring dinners ever." Right? Seriously. <laughs> you know. So let's bring them. On. Amanda and Jamie, uh, w w welcome to the show. Hello. How's it going? What's up? Yeah, you guys are boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say I don't think this is going to be boring at all. No, I don't think I don't think so either. I mean, we we always have some great conversations, and you know what's funny is that um is that we we when the four of us are together, we we tend to pair up. I kind of pair up with Amanda, and you pair up with Jamie, and then like there's there's all kind of like magic and great conversations that that that, that happen from that. But uh, but hey, uh, just to set up, like uh, where are you guys from? I'm from Tampa, Florida. I'm born and raised here. I'm a rare person here in Florida. Um, and I've been in the industry for 19 years. And I got into hair kind of by accident, but it was kind of meant to be where I was going to college, didn't know what I wanted to do. I was always creative and artistic, changing majors every other semester because I just wasn't fulfilling that creative need. And uh, my younger sister always knew she wanted to do hair. So as soon as she was graduating, she was going right into hair school. And I was always a hair model. I'd always done, you know, I was like a punk rock kid. So I had mohawks and colored my hair and all that kind of stuff. So the writing should have been on the wall. Um, but while I was in college, I was working at uh, a bar. And one night a guy randomly came up to me and he goes, this is weird, but you look like you're a cool hair hairdresser. He's like, could you do something to my hair? Cause I had cool hair that my sister did to me. And uh, so that was kind of the, between that and then not being happy in college and my sister kind of pushed me and I went to hair school with her when she graduated. So my sister and I went to hair school together what? and forward almost 19, 20 years later, here I am. That's incredible. You know, um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna brain fart his name. The guy in Philadelphia, oh my God, what's his name? guy with the long beard african-american guy anyways he went to hair school with his mom which i thought like this is the first time that i've heard this can, but i could never imagine going to hair school with my mom right my mom would have rocked it she would have rocked it oh my god yeah and what if your mom rocked it yeah yeah my mom's a hair school dropout so yeah oh, I, yeah i would have loved to go to school with my mom and just screw with her the whole time i would have loved that <laughs> that's awesome amanda did you grow up in tampa as well no i'm from maryland so i feel like we have that Connection. Uh, yeah. So I'm from Maryland and then I moved here right after I graduated high school in 2003 and then started at the Aveda Institute pretty much. Why, why did you move to Tampa? Uh, my mom lived here. Oh, yeah. your beauty school so, dropout mom? Yeah. So it was familiar yet unfamiliar. You know what I mean? Like a little safety net. 
So like, like in this area, like when I was going through school and even when Katie was going through school, like Graham Webb was like the Institute, like in, in, you know, in like the DMV area. And then, um, and then since Graham Webb closed, it's definitely like uh, Paul Mitchell, the temple school, which is the school to kind of go to. Is there like a, like, is there a the school in Tampa? Cause I know that there's like a Paul Mitchell stood there. I know that there's an Aveda there. Is, is there one that's like, I mean, you're going to say Aveda, but you know, Jamie, uh, Jamie, where'd you go to school actually? Did you go to the Aveda Institute? No. So when I went to school, because I was still going to college at the time when my sister was uh, starting hair school and we went to a small hair school that started in like a separate building at a church oh. that had a really small school of like maybe 15 kids. And then what was really wild is my sister and I were like two of five uh, cosmetologists, the rest were all barbers. So it was predominantly a barbering school. So, so fitting for a hair school to be in a church. Yeah, <laughs> ex exactly. And they eventually, they eventually moved and got their own building. Like by the time I was almost done with school, but yeah, I had a different hair experience in school where, you know, I did a lot of barbering, which I wasn't expecting to do. Um, and I did a lot of black hair which at the time I didn't know any difference. Like people would have been terrified, but I didn't know any different. So I was doing like relaxers and wraps and sets and like things like that all day long. And lo and behold, like when I came out, like I had no fear of any texture of hair, but I didn't know any different. So I was just like, oh, this is just normal to me. It's just like another fabric of hair. Let's rock this out. So, so that was kind of like a blessing in disguise where I was like, not fearful of anything once I got out of hair school. So my hair school experience was way different than her experience. That's so interesting too, because I feel like that's a common um, complaint about hair school now. That was 20 years ago, but even now it's like schools are just starting to integrate all fabrics of hair. So that's really interesting that that was your experience 20 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. But I blast in school because I mean, it was like, working in the barbershop like it was awesome like the conversations you would hear like there was just like no filter to anybody in my hair school experience <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> and then how how was the veda uh, institute amanda i loved it because it felt like we, i mean it was pretty snobby because <laughs> it was like we are the harvard of hair that was graham webb that was that definitely, was definitely where, where, where yeah. we went. Like, and we, I was the third class because it just opened. So it was very by the book. We had to wear all black. You had a white stripe going across your shirt. They'll send you home. Snap. Like it was hardcore, you know, hair learning at the same time. I had a full clientele at the end. Like I had a great experience. I loved it. I cried like a baby my last day. <laughs> I did not want to leave. <laughs> I was the opposite. I definitely wanted to leave. I, I couldn't get out of there quick enough, but it took me two years. So I didn't get out of there too quick. Yes. Well, it, it took like a year and a half and, and, and I went from like a day school and then my wife got pregnant. So then I was like, I was like, I got to work, you know, I got to do stuff. So then I, I moved to a night school. So that like, you know, cut, cut the time down. And honestly, I think at some point they were just like, we're kind of sick of seeing you, you know, we'll just sign you out and sign your, your, your <laughs> stuff out, you know, um, which I'm pretty sure happened. We also, um, we also, uh, we would, we would party and hang out with the teachers and then we would like get our books stamped. We would get them drunk and then we'd stamp our books for it. Remember we were talking about perms and how many perms I've done in my career, which was a big fat zero. It's because I would stamp out all my perm sets like in the thing. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, th there's a, there were, there was an advantage to being like the only straight guys in the school, you know, like we would just like party with the teachers and then, you know, take advantage of our, 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 our test out book. So, uh, if you, if you're coming into the, to my salon, you definitely don't want me to do your perm. Um, I think that's where we end up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm an overachiever. It's supposed to be a 12, like just a 12 month program. And I was finished in 10. Yeah. Yeah, I was an overachiever too. Yeah, I was the same thing. As soon as I, they could, what we could do back when I, we had 1200 hours for the state of Florida, but at a thousand, you could challenge the board, what they called it and mm -hmm. take the test. But if you failed it, you had to not only finish the other two hour, 200 hours, but go additional. I think it was 200 or 250 hours of remedial. So it was kind of that, be careful what you wish for. But I was at a point now where I'm like, all right, I've already been through college. I've gone, it's like 10 months of this school. I'm like, I'm ready to get out of here. I was like, I just had all this trust in my studying skills. I'm like, let's do this. And I challenged and I passed it and moved on. Now, 
I learned what I needed to do to out of hair school, but I had to learn so much when I got out of hair school because I didn't know so many things because I just never had practice other than like filling it out, like you say, to get a stamp off on my check sheet. You know, I didn't have like crazy bobs or highlights and all these things to physically do on real people. So yeah, so then luckily I apprenticed and you know, I apprenticed for I think close to a year and that's where I learned everything. And that's how we met at the first salon we started working at where she was done apprenticing when I was just getting hired to apprentice. So like I straight up will tell everyone now I was terrible when I started, like absolutely horrible. Absolutely true. (laughs) But I had the like the willingness to just learn and teach myself or like I I mean, would cut mannequin. I mean, I would take models. I, I like really tried hard because also the salon I worked at, there was kind of inspiring to me because everyone came out like badass. And I'm like, well, damn, I'm like behind the eight ball. I got to like catch up to everybody. So I was lucky that I had the people around me to support me and teach me because I didn't know crap when I got out. <laughs> and luckily at that time, what is this like 2005? Scene hair was cool. Oh, so you could really metal. just jack some hair up and no one would really know it's cool it was like all those kind of like ponytail cuts and like spiky like cross your bangs emo haircuts and all black. that kind of stuff. everyone just had like black and red or black and pink so you could just oh my god if i had pictures of all my hairstyles god that's crazy that's crazy talk man um I'm, i i feel like an idiot being in this room with you with with you three overachievers here you know? <laughs> It took me two years to finish 1,500 hours, and Jamie's doing it. Well, you had a baby. You had a baby. On the way. Not, not yeah. quite, but, oh. You know, on the way. That's 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 wild. So, okay, back up. So, in 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 the many salons that I've worked at, not really, it's only been a few. Um, but uh, but w- what do they think about like their assistants dating or their their young stylist dating? Because I would have been a little, I would have been a little bent about that. Not bent uh-huh. out, but but kind of like just got to keep an eye on it. Like, I mean, if they break up, it's going to create like all kinds of stuff in the air. And oh yeah, I it, got go ahead. I got the lecture from the boss, but the boss was also. His partner worked at the salon as well. Mm. So he couldn't really say too much, but he did give me the warning of like, watch yourself, because if it goes bad, everyone's in it. In our in our defense, it wasn't like it was a rant, like we knew each other a good year or so of working at the salon before it kind of got to us dating, if that made sense. So yeah. we were in other relationships. Like, it, so, it, you know, we were just got to be friends at work over time. And um, he would come over and massage my shoulders when I was sitting in my salon chair. I'm like, I'm so tired. Oh. And I was like, I like this. Uh, I like your boss. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's a, well, you know what? You know what's very apparent, uh, actually? Like, um, w- when we get to know you and when we talk to you guys, it's it, it's super apparent that you guys are friends first. You know, you, it's like it's like you just happen to be married. You know, like like it's obvious that you guys you guys are buddies, and and even like even like how secure you are with each other is, is, is very um, obvious to me as well. Now, maybe that's not the truth, but that's at least the way that, that, that it looks. And and that, I think that that's kind of why it's, it's kind of cool hanging out with you guys. Cause it's not any of that, like that weirdness that can sometimes happen between couples and stuff. But, but back to like, the, it's never bad when they're dating in the salon. That's actually kind of cool. Cause everybody kind of gets to live on cloud nine a little bit together. But when the breakup happens, now everybody's like in it and like nobody can pick sides and nobody, well, uh, you know, that, yeah. that, that's where it gets weird. So you would have definitely gotten a lecture from me, too, about like, all right, now what's going to happen? You know, you guys have got to, you know, whatever. I mean, luckily, you know, maybe you never broke up, but it seems like all the young relationships break up a couple of times before you get on track. But just never. Yeah. Huh? That's been hang, like hanging out and then we just kind of never left. Like we've never went away from each other. Yeah. It's a then, little, what do you call that? Inter- codependent, a little. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. But in the best way, it's like, it, way. yeah, it's like we bring out the other things in each other that we struggle with, if that makes sense. So, you know, we don't see it as a negative situation. And we have our moments. We definitely do things on our own and stuff like that. But when we're around our hair people, they see us together all the time. And everyone's like, oh, how do you do it? I'm like, well, 
we have to communicate. We're not always the best, but again, we work on things. It's the ebb and flow of stuff. We have normal relationship things. We have a family, so we have normal day-to-day life issues and problems that come arise and stuff to deal with. But we've just learned to navigate those. We learned to work in our strengths and build each other up in that. So it's like, if Amanda knows I have a weakness in something, she's not gonna force that on me. She's gonna take over and do that. And same thing with her. So we can have the family machine working like a well-oiled, you know, machine and keep it going. And yeah, those things that remind us again, we have, we always remember that we always have the same goal in mind. Our hearts are always in the same place. We just have different avenues that we think to get there. I'm so interested because, you know, our industry is one of those like unique ones where if you're with a partner who's not in it, it's kind of hard to describe stuff at times or, you know, explain like, you know, I just dealt with this energy vampire for the last four hours. Just don't freaking talk to me, please. Um, Similar to like the restaurant industry too, right? Like that's kind of another tough industry where if you're not in it or have worked in it, you don't really understand the nuances. But would you say with you guys being hairdressers, is that I mean, you just kind of understand each other a little more too, like when you need your space or what have you. I definitely feel like we know, like Jamie tends to be more introverted than I am. So sometimes when I get done work, I'm like hyper and jazzed, you know? And then Jamie tends to just want to just quiet, zone out, not deal with it or, you know, not not deal with it, but just not want to recap the day all the time. So we tend to, after work, we'll go for a walk and just kind of vent or be quiet, whichever is needed, and navigate from there. And now at this point, we understand each other's rhythm and everything, so... That, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm I'm grateful actually that like we have I have like a 45 minute commute at, at the end of the day, but but like I look forward to that time. It's just like just chill out, kind of like disconnect with the day. And then like, you know, again, your life is so together that I, I think I would actually I would struggle with that or, or I would have to find a new rhythm because like I kind of like, okay, now it's time to be now it's time to be dad or it's time to be husband or it's time to be, you know, then I get that 40 minutes to kind of be like you know, go like they let that go. And then like 20 minutes to like, okay, now this is my role now. Um, and certainly my goal, and this has been my goal for years now. And I'm, I'm, I fail way, way more than I succeed, but to be more present, you know? So like when I'm in that space is to be more present and I'm trying to get better about putting that damn phone away, but golly, that thing is like a endorphin, like whatever. It's like shooting up, like, you know, TikTok or something. I don't know. It's, it's kind of crazy, but I'm trying to be a little bit better with that. Um, but that 40 minutes also allows me to kind of like adjust from, from, from one to the other. I have that too. And I don't know what I would do without it. Also with Mark, like my husband's an entrepreneur too. So when uh, like he does a lot of stuff with us for the podcast and for events, so I'll ask him something randomly in the middle of a Tuesday and he's like, could you send me an email please? And like sets that boundary. I'm like, I love that boundary. Yes, I, tell you. I can do that, but you're right here. Just answer me. <laughs> how, do you, yeah, how, do you, how do you guys do that as well? I mean, do you have boundaries that you say? Oh, let, let's back up a little bit. Sorry. Anybody that's listening in, again, you kind of just got us in the friend zone. So not only did Amanda and Jamie start working together in year one, but they've kind of, they've opened, um, this is a, this is a second salon that you've opened together? Yeah, well, we did. We worked at the original salon that we met at for, I don't know, seven years. Then we went to, then I had our baby and I had Nova and then I left the, we left the salon when she was five months. We went to salon lofts for two years and then we opened Rose style. And then we were there for 10 years and now Rose style house in April this year. So you guys have been together your whole careers. I mean, you guys have kind of had to had to figure it out then, huh? Yeah, we've done separate stuff because we used to be educators for Schwarzkopf. So we started doing that together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then when I was pregnant, Jamie got the upgrade and and became the, what was your title? U.S. Artistic. I don't know. Badass U.S. team and would travel and do all the fun shows and all that kind of good stuff. So then we had a little separation, but that was hard for me to work through also because I wanted to do it. And then he gets to do it and I'm sitting at home with a baby as he's traveling and being cool guy and learning all the best stuff. So I had to really check myself. Yeah. I mean, I really- what was that like? I mean, what was that? 
it's so easy to kind of look at Jamie and blame like all your like boohoo's on Jamie, but really the boohoo's were about you and, and, and where you were. So what was that, what was that experience like, or what was that learn like? Um, I just felt like it was a big blow to my ego. No offense, but I, I feel like everyone's different, but I feel like I'm the more creative, <laughs> like I'm the more creative stylist. Jamie's more like business get them in, get them out. And I'm like, I want to create these big works of art and I want to take pictures of it. And I want videos and all this stuff. And then Jamie was getting that experience and I was at home kind of single momming it, but not a single mom. Do you know what I mean? So I had to really check my ego and I would get pretty irritated and kind of resentful towards it. Towards him or towards it? Both. Yeah. But when I look back, when I reflect back, I realized I had a, a bratty, piss poor attitude. And that's probably why I didn't get the position or invite it to move up because I did have that ego about me. And Jamie didn't at all. Jamie's super humble. So that's I see that reflecting back. But at the time, I was pretty freaking irritated. Yeah. And I mean, in general, when we do it, because I love doing it, because I love the relationships that I met out of the people, experiences, and the mentors that I personally got out of it. I mean, you couldn't pay for that type of mentorship. But when we had a family, it, it after a while, it started to wear on us because there could be times where I would work, you know, Tuesday through Friday, get on a plane on Saturday, be gone Sunday, Monday, come back Monday midnight or one in the morning Tuesday, work. And I would have that sometimes for like six weeks in a row. Ooh. And yeah. when you do that type of stuff like that, not only does it wear on like me physically and just the family, but then the dynamics are off because my headspace, because like how you were saying, Corey, you get in your head. So I was the same way where I would, I'd prefer much rather to go soon, right in the morning, get it done with. Otherwise I start getting in my head about things. And well, yeah. So thinking about that transition between being up here and doing all that and then trying to come home and still be a dad and a husband. And like that switch is difficult, especially yeah. for men, no offense. And, <laughs> and like having to do that for that long, like a couple of weeks at a time, I can't even imagine. I, um, I, my nephew is, is a, uh, is a Navy SEAL. And I think we've talked about this on the podcast mm. before. And, um, I, after his Navy SEAL training, I asked him, I was basically setting him up to tell me about hell week, you know, um, which is what we all want to know about when it comes to Navy SEALs. I go, you know, so what was the toughest week there? Right. And this is after a year of training. And he goes, it was the week after hell week. And like that blew me away. I'm like, what, what do you mean the week after? And he goes, he goes, what it is. And, and they tell him this, that what it is, is during that week, you, you totally dump all your endorphins. So the following week, there's literally nothing left to feel good. Like you have nothing chemically in your body that makes you feel good. He says, you know, we're a bunch of type A guys. We weren't allowed to exercise. We weren't allowed to run. We weren't allowed to do anything. And we had to just kind of live with each other. And we all hated each other because none of us had any anything left to feel good. And, and again, I'm not comparing to what we do to Navy SEALs. However, I also know that when you're on a lot, I, it, it takes me two or three days to kind of feel normal again, you know, and just to kind of like get back into like, okay, like it, I can feel good again. I feel like you're on so much again. I, I'm not comparing us to Navy SEALs necessarily, but I am comparing that, that, that there's definitely an endorphin dump. Now it might not, might not be a hundred percent endorphin dump like a Navy SEAL would be after a week of hell week, but there's definitely an endorphin dump. And, and my family doesn't see the best of me when I get back. Um, now they've also learned over the years that it's just better just to kind of like let me be and ignore, ignore me. Um, not that I'm cranky or anything, but I just get very internal, you know, yeah. like I don't have any energy to give. So I'm trying to hold on to as much energy as I can. So back to you, Jamie, and like doing that for six weeks and never, ever getting that opportunity just to catch up. And, and it it's it, I, I, not to play the world's smallest violin, but man, that flight home is always the worst, right? That drive. Well, you guys live in Tampa, so it's like a four minute drive. But, you know, for us regular people that airports are like an hour away, like that's the worst. That's the worst drive in the world is that drive from the airport home. You just I just want to be home. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was it was a rigmarole. But again, I loved every moment. It just got to a, a crossroads where I knew something had to give. And that's when I decided, you know, as you know, and I still love everybody. I have a great relationship. There was nothing, you know, just point I had to step away because 
family comes first. And at the time, think about it, Jamie, when we had our kid, I was 26 and Jamie was 30. So think about how you, your mindset at that, we didn't know like, oh, I'm more introverted. I need time for myself. I need this. Here's my expectation. We didn't know any of that. And then throw having a baby in the mix. It was just like, yeah, we just didn't know anything. Yeah. Looking back, reflecting back, I'm like, we handled that very well considering we were constantly at our breaking point. Yeah. Oh, what is it called now? Burnout. Right. <laughs> you know what the... Bravo to you, Amanda, for um, reflecting and realizing that and like, ex you know, apologizing for it and, you know, owning it, because I feel like that's a step that's really hard for people to get through. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but that's but that's what made us stronger and helped us. A lot of that time frame is what helped us realize a lot of those things that we now implement now. So we don't even get to that. point. it doesn't even get to that point close to that point. You know, we need that. You and I? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or when we travel, we just need to be, here's my type A. We just need to be more like organized in how we do things so that when we come off of something like this beauty gives back, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we like just have a, a regimen for that. That's like a debrief or something. Yeah. Or just something, you know, with, uh, Amanda, what do you think? <laughs> like an integration day kind of. Mm -hmm. Where it's like reflecting, sharing your thoughts on what just happened, but not jumping right back into life. Taking which is notes. Yeah. Not, like not taking or, notes, just actually getting it off your chest or whatever. Yeah. I definitely feel so much better. Like if I don't speak what I'm, what's brewing in my mind, it feels like a lump in my throat and I'm going to freak out. So for me, it's better to just like word vomit all of everything, even though some stuff might be mean or harsh. But then after, I feel so much. <laughs> oh, great. Now you've just, what's that called? Great. Trauma dumping. Trauma dumped. Trauma dumped. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No. That's the worst to... ever, man. You know what? I, I wonder if that's a gender thing. Maybe. You know, like, I don't, like, I don't have any desire to do that or, or I don't find any, like, it doesn't fill me up to do that. Maybe that's an age thing then, Corey. No, <laughs> Jamie was, Jamie was nodding his head. No, I think like, it's a gender thing. I think women need to verbalize and men internalize. Yeah. And not in a negative way. Everyone thinks it's negative. But me, if I was to sit there and just blab out things, it doesn't make me feel better. Like getting it off. Like, if anything, it makes me internalize it more like, what the hell did I just say now? Did I mess this up even more? You know, something like that. So, yeah, it's more like I need to internalize it to like process it to like. I guess run itself through, if that makes sense. I, I think I, I think that's definitely the way that I do it, right? Like I just process it and then, you know, like, uh, and I also like, I feel more connected internalizing it because I can put the dots together. If I'm just spewing, like, I, I don't feel like I'm processing, I'm processing anything like that's that that's not. It's just not the way that I work, you know, and, and I like to think that I'm pretty. And also when I internalize and I don't know if you do this, Jamie, but when I internalize, it's never about the other person or the situation. It's about how I entered this, the, the situation or how I entered the, the whatever, like what could have I done better? No matter how bad it was, what could have I done differently or what could have I done? And I put more of that on, I put more of that on myself, but not on like, like on pressure, but like how can, if this arises again, who am I? what shoes am I standing in if this arises again? And if I, if I'm verbalizing that, it just, that, that won't process. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. And it's huge. Yeah. And, and just being self-aware of your actions yeah. is. And exactly like you said, it's just being aware, especially from a male perspective is because not even saying this, if you come from a perspective of like, Oh, what could I have done different? Does not mean you're, admitting to like, oh, even if the situation wasn't truly your fault or anything, there's still always a way that you can come and bring your better self to a situation. Even if it isn't even your fault in the situation, you could even approach it to, you know, whatever the situation might be. But yeah, it's a great way to think about stuff. So. Well, I've, I've also noticed, I mean, you use the word fault and 95% of things, although we like to position it as fault, it's not fault. It, it, it's always just like a miscommunication or a miss whatever. I don't believe that most of us are evil. I don't believe that most of us are out to get each other. Like, like that's not, I'm not saying that those people don't exist, but I'm not going to like filter 
every single relationship in my life through that funnel because it's just not, it, it, I just haven't found it to be true. So, you know, part of that processing is like, Jamie didn't mean it the way he couldn't possibly have meant it the way that I took it. So what am I bringing to it as to why Jamie offended me for that? You know, it, it's more of those kind of conversations. And then with that goes like, Jamie, I mean, what would have his perspective been? What would have Jamie's perspective been like that? that that's kind of more how I internalize it. And that also makes me not hate Jamie. Right. Like, like, oh, well, he's human. You know, and even even if it was a mistake on his part, we're also I'll forgive that we're all flawed as well. Like none of us, are, none, none of us, aside from me, none of us are perfect, you know, so it, it's just a way to kind of like it's just a way to kind of like give grace um, in, in a way to I don't know if that made any sense either. Like, I don't know, you're like, not making any sense today. I, I never make freaking sense. <laughs> So, but, but you guys are like, uh, to kind of back up, I mean, you guys are such a lesson on spouses working together, you know, and, and, and oh, by the way, I, I wanted to ask you, Amanda, Jamie, uh, uh, about an hour ago said that, um, you know, like, like if, if, if he's short on something, you pick up, like, like what, what's, what's Jamie uh, short on? Like what, where do you feel like you have to pick up in, in the relationship or in, not in the relationship as, as far as in your home, but like in the shop? I would say mostly on some social situations I have to pick up because Jamie's completely content sitting in silence or like, like we host VIP events now. So we host for our clients. We'll have little events that we do like a makeup class or yoga by the pool. Our next one coming up is actually Britt and Chris Carmichael coming to our house and we're going to do yoga meditation and a sound bath. So we need people to come to these things. So a lot of times I'm like, did you talk to your clients today about our event? And he's like, no. I'm like, what the, f I'm like, bring it up in conversation, like set the conversation up to go in that direction. Like I got to sell tickets. I got to come on. It like stresses me out versus I can't stop talking about it. And even when we go out to like hair events, Jamie tends to be the more quiet one. And I can go up to anybody and just be like, hi, you know, and talk to everybody. So I feel like that's definitely where I have to step in a, um, a lot and making social media. Yeah, but a lot of that stuff, social. like with that, she's naturally just that person and I'm naturally introverted. So it's not that I don't want to do it. I just let her take that role and I'm like, all right, you go for it and I'll jump in when I need to jump in. Which is, <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> because people always are think hairdressers are always just so you know extroverted and you know you've got to be wanting to talk to people all the time but i mean i think a lot of us are introverted i, I, I mean i definitely it, you're not don't claim i'm that. not i'm not no 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 no. i'm not introverted <laughs> at all i wouldn't know what to do with that energy. i get weird though like when i get quiet i'm like, uh oh you know unless i'm at the house though i don't i don't really here i'm not i'm, I'm pretty laid back here but there's also a lot of energy here, so I don't really feel like I have to feel that energy. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, it's not Either. filling energy though. Like we, we, I don't know. I, I I'm more of like I gotta observe and take in, and then I take action. Where you just will walk up to someone random, be like, "Hi, do you listen to Hair Industry?" I'm like, "Oh, oh yeah. my God, Corey." <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know, I mean, I mean, like to Amanda's point, though, like if you don't talk about it, nobody knows. No, it's great. I'm glad you do that. I'm you know? really glad you like, get the word out there because I don't. I mean, all of our relationships have been through that. I mean, like it's true. Like even you know, traveling with Tony. Tony doesn't talk. Tony, if we put Tony and Jamie in the room together, they wouldn't even know each other's name. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, like, like it's like you know, he's just he's just laid back. I mean, but here's the thing, and 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 uh, Amanda, I'll rely on you for the answer. Like like when. You, when Tony has something to say, you better believe that it's been thought through and that and that I don't want to say that it's the right answer necessarily, but 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 it's a thoughtful answer and it's been thought through. He definitely puts a lot of heart into all of his thoughts and everything he says is like has a purpose to it. I enjoy a lot our conversations that we've had. Yeah. Especially at premiere with the funny faces. Yeah. I love how he just nodded his head. <laughs> Like, like <laughs> took a bow. <laughs> if you guys are just listening to have something wise to say, I'll just say it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. All right, I want to get into what I teased at the top, and that was like, so um, you guys have opened a. 
it's it's hard. Well, I said I teased it at the top, saying like they they opened a hybrid salon, but it's a hybrid different than you know, or different than than what we talk about when we use the word hybrid. Um, what they've done, and Katie and I were were fortunate enough to to visit a few months ago, but but what Jamie and Amanda have done is they opened a salon at their house, but not in their house. So they actually did an outbuilding that they built, which is their salon, and it's absolutely the coolest. Thing that oh, you guys are sitting in it, right? I know exactly. So yeah, if you're tuning in, you kind of see it. I, like, how did this like just how did the thought like open up or begin or, and and that stuff? And then I kind of want to walk through because I know that it took you a few years to kind of do it. But but can we can we walk through the process? Yeah. Okay. So when we were at the other salon, we were at that before COVID, right? You kind of have to say like BC. Um, we were at the point where we were like, should we grow our business? It was booth rental salon. We were all full. People kept calling, wanting to work with us. And we we're like, okay, we don't have space. Do we grow the business? That was the thought process. So I started writing things down, having meetings with the city. I have a whole journal. And then COVID happened. And I was kind of just like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I mean, I was over it, you know, I was over the demand I was over and having that three month break felt so good. So I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to add more. I think I actually want to do less. The homeschool that was forced upon us worked great for our family. So we had a full, what, 360, 180, I don't know. 180. Turn <laughs> where we started homeschooling our kid who was in third, going into fourth grade at the time. And then July, 2020, we were like, we're gonna build a home salon so we can do everything all for us, full control and just be Jamie and I. And when you were, when, Amanda, when you were dreaming this up, was it, were you nervous to kind of talk to Jamie about it or had you kind of been like, 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 what was that, like, the that initial conversation, what was that like with your spouse? Um, I'm never really nervous to talk to Jamie about something unless it's behavioral. On whose point? <laughs> <laughs> if anything, we these creative ideas, we kind of yeah. can't stop talking about. Yeah, them. work yes. stuff, I'm, yeah. like, hyper, like hyper creative focus. My brain is just like a ping pong machine, so... No, I wasn't nervous at all. I was just like word vomiting all the things that, and then he'll be like, oh, you know what else I was thinking? And then we just keep piggybacking and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So it went from like, oh, we could have, I don't know, maybe like a little space and then, well, let's get a client who's an architect. Let's design it. And then Jamie's really into design. So it just kept getting more and more and more. Yeah. It, it, was, was there ever a conversation to have hairstylists at work at row house or was it always intended just the two of you no so that's when in discovery of how it happened so we were before we decided to build this we were just searching for another location that we could maybe again own something because i was tired of paying somebody else you know rent um and build like a tiny micro salon on another property somewhere so when we met with the city, we tried, we gave them like, you know, several different scenarios of things we would like to do. And what, what do we need to look for in a property that can accommodate this or that you allow us to do this? So when we got down that wormhole of zoning, we were looking on a map and we noticed our current house we lived in was actually zoned correctly for one of our ideas oh, snap. And we didn't know that leading into it so that just immediately narrowed it down to what we wanted to do then um so they allowed we were allowed to build a freestanding full functional salon we just had to live here that was the only stipulation it had to be a live work i couldn't you know turn my house into it and then move away um so yeah that's how that even evolved more than i got my client who was an architect and we had like hand drawings of everything and we were like, okay, make this make sense into a realistic drawing. And that's how it started steamrolling. And yeah. here we are. We were really into tiny homes at the time too. Yeah. <laughs> Not a tiny, I mean, it, I don't know what the square footage is, but it doesn't feel small when you're there. It, it, it's definitely open and airy. It's 450. Or four, it's 450 square feet, excuse me. So yeah, it's high ceilings make it, but yeah, it seems way bigger than you think it's gonna seem coming in. 
And it was fun. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jamie. I stepped over you. It it was fun with our clients because we kind of kept them in the dark of what we were doing exactly. So they thought we were having like a she shed. They thought we were coming into like some little makeshift like home salon like you would have thought. And we blew everybody's mind when they came in. We well, definitely was- blew our mind when we got to visit because it was like, oh, this is way more than. I'm like, wait, do. what? <laughs> like you just walk through a portal or something. It's hard. Okay. To, that's it, right? Yeah. Right. It's like it's it's the row house portal mm-hmm. there. That, and 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 you guys were lucky enough. Not only were you zoned for commercial, but that you had the space. You had the extra 450 feet that you could uh, that you could do it on. Because I mean, certainly, like in your in your neighborhood. Because I know your neighborhood now, right? Because we drove through it. it. It doesn't look like there's a lot of like there's a lot of like land there. There's not there's a lot of there's a lot of space to build on stuff there. So that that I mean, talk about lucky, right? Serendipitous. Hey, Jamie, you brought up that like you had to live there. What what happens if you have to sell the place? Well, it's still zone. So anything that would fall like business wise under that zoning is perfect fair game to go here. So, I mean, that's just a plus for us that we did everything to code, everything zoned correctly. So when we sell it, we have like a, you know, live work situation that could get sold. Um, Home office, you could do mother-in-law suite. Yeah. All the things. We are thinking ahead for retirement. Or, or a pool house, just a pool house. I mean, your pool is right there, right? That, that's cool too. Um, How do you this might be getting too much into the weeds about it, but like, do you like the mortgage that you own on the build and stuff? Do you, do you separate that outside of your, your, your house income? Um, like, or or how, how, how do you have that broken down or does it even matter? It, it just depends on really your setup, your business, your, like how you want to do it, like what your accountant thinks where, I mean, cause there's so many ways you can do it. Um, But then there's also a lot of ways, thankfully, we have help with clients that are lawyers and people that know of what you need to separate, have separate for like legal purposes versus what is fine to just, you know, for instance, like for us, we just become our own landlord and, you know, write ourselves a rent check from the business. Um, So there's a lot of ways, but that's the one thing, that's another thing I tell new people in the industry or people that are going off on their own or starting salons. The best hire you can ever have is an accountant. You know, I can spend all the time and try to do all that on my own. And I understand it, but that money every month that goes to them is the best money spent to keep everything appropriate and the way it's supposed to be. So, yeah, if you think about it, like LLC or S Corp now. So so it'd be like row style house employees, Jamie and Amanda. So Jamie and Amanda pay rent to Rose Style House, which encompasses our mortgage and all the things. So it's like a portion of it. But think about how much do you pay in rent? Yeah. Thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Yeah. More. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're, yeah, about that, right? That's about right. Well, mine's way less, but we won't get into that. But 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 on but on average, I mean, like even even a suite now these days. I mean, I mean, you guys are know too how much was your booth rental. But you know, there's 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 people easily paying you know four hundred bucks a week. You know, that's eighteen. That's sixteen hundred. You know, you multiply that by two. Now you're at thirty two hundred a, a, a week. You know, I mean, I'm the thirty two hundred a month. I mean, you know, certainly if it's a two person space, you just know, for rent. Just, yeah. Not, yeah, just for rent there. Um, I mean, I would like you, okay. to your point, Jamie, with the, with the accountant. Well, you said you know you know what you know, but the, the where an accountant's great is you don't know what you don't know, right? Exactly. Yeah, like I understand my finances is what I should mean by that. Like when I look at it, like I look at it, pay attention to it, I understand it. But yeah, they do the great thing of like, oh, we can change this and do this, and you can save money here and save. I'm like, that's why I hire you. Great. <laughs> You know, what's interesting too. And like, um, until I had the suite, I didn't realize is that I thought an accountant like worked for the IRS, you know, like, like d- because they're paying the IRS. And then what I learned is that, that they hate the IRS. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to like save you as much money as possible. And that's kind of their job. But, you know, until I had the suite, I didn't really understand that that was 
that, or maybe it's just my account. And I don't know, but that is, you know, that's their role is to not is for you not to pay the CPA and, and, and they kind of gamify it. They're like, Oh, we can do this. Like you were saying, Jamie, we can do this. We can save you a couple dollars here. We can save you a couple dollars there. And that, that that's, that, that, that's really cool. So to your point, hire a good CPA who thinks the IRS is the enemy and you've got, you've got, you've got a winner right there. Now make sure that everything's legal and above board. I'm not suggesting you go, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Trouble. And, um, but whatever, which is really easy to do when you have a suite. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. You just got to be disciplined and responsible. You got to be responsible. You know, uncle Sam will come and get his, whether he comes and gets it or not, you know, with, the, with all the hairdressers use your clients as help. And you know, everyone out there does a lawyer, everyone out there, someone probably accountants get their hair done, use them, barter with them. I mean, for when we first started, we bartered with things or traded off or did things like use that skill to your ability. If you feel like you can't afford it or anything, cause it's the best help you could get. And, and not only that, but they care about you, you know, on a personal level, they care about you. They care about you. They care about your family. They care about, they care about all of that. So, you know, if you can, if you can barter that, that's, that's the best free haircut you'll do, you know, <laughs> ever really, because you know they want to see you succeed. Unlike, you know, someone else who you just hire out of the, are there yellow pages anymore? Where did that really just go to my, somebody you can Google, Google. <laughs> somebody you can Google. but according to Gary Vaynerchuk, Google's dying. Like there's not going to be search engines anymore, but, uh, well, I guess because you can talk it or AI or whatever is taking over, I guess. I don't know. Well, I, have, I, I have a story that I'll tell you later that's not hair related, that just happened to me. About AI? No, about someone. Okay. Someone reached out to me with Gary V being like, oh, he would, he wants to coach people. Do you own your own business? So all leads up, yada, yada. And basically he wants you to buy Gary V will help coach you in Bitcoin and some other stuff that I'm like, I don't even know what that means. It's all techie. I don't even know, but I wanted him to actually coach me in my real business. Yeah. I don't think that that was Gary V. I think that that was somebody uh, 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 impostering as Gary V. No, it literally, like I went through all the steps and went to a different app, everything, but yes, I agree. I'm like, I was kind of excited at first. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. But I don't. I don't pretend like I would ever have access to Gary V either. Gary, if you I have access it. to Gary V every day on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> then I get an email. I just don't get that email, Amanda. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, I applaud you guys. You know, um, uh, uh, again, uh, well, first off, thank you. You know, just for being friends with us, and and you know, I just I I I honor the conversations that we have and the time that we get to spend together. I I I find it remarkable that. Um, that you guys can work together so effectively. I just, I couldn't imagine. I mean, like my wife and I, we do like our books and stuff together, but to actually like be day to day together, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. You know, like I, I just, I, there'd be too much, be too much in the air, you know, so just to have enough respect and, and, and whatever for that. I, 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 I'm amazed by that. Honest, honestly. Um, so congratulations for that. Congratulations for making that work. And, you know, I, I think that's when it comes down to how I opened about like, it's obvious that you guys are friends. You know, it's obvious that you guys have a, that, that you guys have a big picture that, that, that you're working on together, but you know, congratulations. That's awesome. Super excited for the salon. You guys, when did you guys open? April 24th this year. And when so it's months. And we visited right after that. Oh, we were June because it was right after premiere. We went from we went from premiere to to the row house. Oh, yeah. did you find it? Did you find it weird, or were you too excited to find it weird that people are not coming to your house? Um. We, well, we thought all this through. So clients will get a different confirmation now. So we sent we personal personalized and sent them a video where it's like, here's how to park. Here's where to enter. Here's. And some people, there's been a couple knocks on the front door, which I'm like, did you watch the video? I always call people out. I'm like, did you watch the video? What video? I'm like, the one freaking thing I sent you, you know what I mean? Like watch the freaking video. I tried to think all the nervousness things through of like going to someone's house. Where do I go? Uh, you know? So, but honestly, no, it hasn't been that weird. I really like it. And I feel friends, like I'm friends with all my clients. So I really like it. I feel like I'm like the hostess, like a hair B and B, you know, like. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I want to take care of everybody. I have snacks. I have drinks. I want, I want everyone to just understand our lives and. Yeah, I feel like almost every yeah. client that has come in, their reaction or what they tell to us during their appointment is, 
I could stay here all day. As soon as yeah. I walk in that door, I feel relaxed. I feel a calmness and I'm ready to just chill and hang out. Yeah. So it's like the best compliments. We wanted to create a little oasis. We wanted to be private, you know, just up the pampering on our clients. Um, not to mention just some of our clients that are kind of higher in athletes or different people that we do. It's like a private space for them to come now that they don't have to be in front of everybody else getting things done and stuff like that. So that's also a plus. Yeah. That's really cool. And and the salon is behind like a fence too. So it's like, it's even more secluded, you know, um, we saw that video, by the way, man, you sent it to us when we were going by, you're like, here's the video. And when we knocked on your door, you're like, didn't you watch the video? I'm just no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just and then like, come into my house, my real house, <laughs> come in anyway. Yeah I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. That might weird me out a little bit. I hate doing hair at home, but you're not really at home. It's at home, oh, but not at home. It feels it's at home, but not in home. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it doesn't feel weird at all. It feels honestly, I had a lot of anxiety before, which I didn't realize I had a lot of anxiety before. Like I was waking up shaky hands, aching stomach, like daily going to the other salon, just always feeling like I had to be on and perfect and I have to show up like a boss. And uh, you know, I don't know. I just putting the, my own self pressure on myself, it became a lot being the example for everybody yeah, else. It was just a lot. And then here I'm like, I haven't had anxiety for a couple months. It is a lot though, when you're leading a team, like, especially if you want the professionalism and I mean, it all comes from the top. So if you want your team to be a certain way, you need to be that way too. And it is a lot of pressure, but it's an expectation that you're putting out there. And, you know, now you guys can just be, you know, there enjoying your time with your clients and you're just, you know, at home. It's, it's nice. But if, you're feeling, but if you're feeling that anxiety to show up in a certain way, maybe that's not a good rule. Well, yeah, that's, because, yeah. Now, because now you're, you're, if it's giving you anxiety, imagine what it's giving your staff. I know. But if you want like people to be professional, not sleep with each other, like no back, no back room crap, you know what I mean? Like clean salon, like cleaning up your color bowls and just stupid oh, yeah. shit. You know, yeah, yeah. you have to do that too. You can't just be the owner or the manager, whoever who shows up and is just like, you know, oh, hey guys, hey guys, and then leaves. And then that's it. Like there's no example. Just no. the natural pressure of being an owner that can, I think can over time give you, cause you're just trying to always uphold that standard that you're, you know, your motto of the salon or whatever you're, you know, phrases or whatever you want it to have it be. You're just trying to uphold that. So and I think I just had, I was very overstimulated listening to like other people's consultations and I couldn't tune out of it. If the music was turned, like say someone was there before me and the music was turned on and I hated the music, like, oh, it would just make me insane. I, so I have a lot of things where I'm just like, I kind of just need things my way all the time. I've realized, <laughs> I've realized that at least so I'm still so Clearly, Amanda picks the music. Oh, yeah. If I want to throw her off a day, I, can, I just turn a radio station on and see how long I can go before she notices. How long? <laughs> oh, my God. Some days I'm like, what the fuck? This is not the vibe. This is not the right <laughs> vibe. I, I handpicked and have made a playlist for the last two years. This is like my third row style playlist. Katie, I think I even sent it to you. You did. You did. I mean, I know it's my preferred music, James, and it sounds like you're on your period. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. What, what does that mean, Jamie? <laughs> Maybe I am on my period. And guess what? I do 100% female clientele, so. Alanis Moore set it up. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I tell her sometimes she'll have, like, really, like, sexy R&B music on. No, and I'm like. I don't. And I'm like. The only problem with that is if something comes on, it's like I'm giving a massage to one of my clients as a female and something like that comes no, on. Like, first, of all, first of all, he's full of shit because I would not put that on my playlist. <laughs> Second of all, he can give no massages to his clients. Third of all, what? So you want to play Morgan Wallen all fucking day? Get yeah. out of here. That's not the vibe. That doesn't make me want to do cool hair listening to freaking country and yacht rock all day. Well, we okay. entered this, we entered this conversation about how cute of a couple they are, and I think we just instigated a divorce, Katie, over music. You know what? Though this isn't the first salon to get broken up over music. No, that's why I think it's funny because I can I can ramp it up just by the music selection. 
I'm pretty easily triggered when it comes to sounds. I just have to throw a really random song on the playlist that she doesn't know about and have it like Barbie girl come on or something like just off the wall. <laughs> I love it. I want to be you. Do you have cameras in there? Because I've got to see her reaction when, you know, like this playlist comes on. That would be funny. And we are trying to think of like, what is some new content ideas? I don't I think, know. I think what you and Gary V actually talked about this a couple of years ago. I actually think you just set up a camera in there. It doesn't even have to have sound on it necessarily. And just and those that tune in, tune in, you know, just kind of like do live every single day. Or, or I think to make sure your clients are cool with that, because that is like a cute little private area. So you just want to make sure they're aware. I did see that Gary V clip of like the next famous person is a hairstylist going live, but I can't go live. I am way too raw with my clients. And we talk about crazy shit and I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. So I can't go go live. Yeah. And like the taxi cab confession style. <laughs> I like it. I love that. That's it though. I mean, that was a successful I show. Like show it. I you know, you know, what about well, their face? That kind of success and saying the wrong thing on accident. Jamie would be like, "What you talk about with your clients when I'm not in there?" I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> sorry." As soon as the door closed, baby. That's it. Have you guys noticed that? I, I noticed that my conversations with my clients have completely changed since I've been in a suite. Right. Like, like the, how, how willing and open they are to talk about whatever. Right. Like in the suite, like it was like, damn, like you mean in the salon? No, in a salon, like they were kind of more reserved, more reserved mm -hmm. because they were, you know, ears like three feet away, you know, but like yeah. in the salon, it's like, oh shit. Oh, yeah. We talk about everything. We talk about politics, sex. Oh, religion. I don't do that. Oh, oh my God. I have one story I have to share. I have to share this because this client won't listen, so she'll never know. So she don't, don't give her a name. I, no, no, no. This one she comes in. She hasn't been seeing me very long, only for like a year. So you know, and she's in her mid sixties, and she comes in. She's like, "I'm going to the dentist after this." I was like, "Okay, great." Like I'm just cutting short hair, like a pixie cut, right? And she goes, so I, yeah, like telling me the story about how her tooth came out in the front or whatever. And she goes, I need to ask you this because once I say this to my dentist, they're never going to forget my face that I said this. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, um, so I'm dating this new guy and there's a lot, there's a lot of head involved. <laughs> She's like, I love it. I love it. But that's why my tooth fell out. Oh, <laughs> So she's like, should I say that to my dentist or should I not say that? I'm like this. I'm laughing so hard when she told me this. I'm like, she's in her mid 60s. How aggressive is going, what aggressiveness is going Was on here? Was the tooth already loose? It does not sound comfortable at all. Do you want to get that part out or not? But it was, I was dying. I was dying. But to your point about the leg, she was just like, I'm comfortable with you. So I need you to tell me. <laughs> right? you, so what'd you tell her i told her she should tell him <laughs> if this is going to be a reoccurring problem they need to know her teeth are going to be falling out like that oh snap i hope it was a crown and not like a rooted tooth no i don't know yeah. <laughs> i do oh, gosh. Oh, God. it was wild i loved it i loved every minute i bet poor guy poor guy <laughs> she's like leave them all baby Oh my gosh, that is that is wild. Yeah, I haven't had that conversation. Yeah, that, that, uh, every conversation I've had, the teeth have remained in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god, gosh. it was so good. That's probably my most wild conversation, and I've only known her a year. I'm like, I'm glad you feel comfortable with me. That's all. She made no way to leave the room. Did she? Yeah, you got to go. It was just me and her. Yeah, she's oh like. My god. Now I got to break it to you. Okay. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is the funniest. Just the setup would have been weird. You know, I thought she was going to be like a crackhead or something and like you know, <laughs> broke her tooth on a crack pipe or something. <laughs> oh my God, that's that the, added another layer. That's so crazy. Our uh, clients, you got to love them. You got to love them. That is so wild. Um, <laughs> how can I, how can people follow along with you guys? And, and I, yeah, I don't, Katie, you, you blew it. Uh, that, that was a terrible use of words too. <laughs> Katie, you, uh, <laughs> I don't know how we get out of this conversation. I mean, that, that's kind of the highlight there. Where, where, hey, where, where, the row house? <laughs> go, yeah. How do people find the row house or how can they follow along with you guys or where can they find you or, or I don't even, yeah. I told you this is going to be like a couple friends hanging out. See, it, it is. Well, we, we got the salon page, the Row Style House, and then we have our individual pages, um, Jamie Rourke, and she's Amanda Row Style. Yeah. 
Love. Oh, and you know what? Before we jump out, I did want to talk about one more thing. And it, we talked about this when we were together last time is just just um, how important it is um, if you're a young stylist to uh, to to join and to do contests. And how that opens up and how that opens up. Like, I know that you, I know that actually we just saw you last March in New York at the, uh, at the, at the harebrained awards um, there, because you guys were nominated for that. But can you guys kind of uh, jump in um, and uh, just give your philosophy on hair shows and, or, or not hair shows, but hair, hair events and stuff. I mean, hair contest, Kali. Well, I like winning stuff. <laughs> I never would have guessed that. <laughs> no, I, really like the creative process of making, I like making videos before reels were a thing. So we've entered lots of stuff. I got nominated for a one shot award. What was that? 2016. Um, so that kind of got me pumped up for it. And all my friends do this stuff. So I want to go and have opportunities to see my friends. So how else, what another better way is to go to all the VIP parties and hang out with my friends if I'm also nominated. So I feel like that started, it was the one shot awards. Now I don't enter that. That's a different conversation. Um, Hairbrain video awards. We've been there three times for nominations. Um, we've, Jamie's entered Naha. Mm. Yeah, we're just like, we really enjoy education and the whole industry. So yeah. I already am saving videos and content for something for next year. So hope I'm, to enter the salon in Naha. Oh, that's a great I, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, do you, uh, are you guys doing the hairbrand awards again next year? You going to enter? Yeah. That's cool. I hope you play. Well, last year, last year, Amanda was so cute because uh, it, she was up against Antoinette Beenders, you know, who's like the legend oh, of legends wow. of legends. And she was like, well, if I'm not going to win, it's good not to win against Antoinette Beenders, you know? Kind of. Kind of, right? I mean, like, you, there, there's no shame in that game. Just being in that category with her is like, shit. And I did get to meet her, and she was lovely. So I feel like there was a little bit of an Aveda. There you go. Did you tell, and, her, you, were, did you tell her you were an Aveda artist? No, I said I went to her school, the school, oh. but I don't use Aveda anymore. I use Schwarzkopf. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. Those guys, you know, um, that, that it, it's really, and we talked about this a little bit earlier and then I promise we're going to get out. Maybe I promise. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, it, when, when you're, when you're with like an Antoinette Beenders, when you're with like a, Ro, uh, a, a, a Ruth Roche, when you're with like a Sam Via, like they are all just so open hearted and kind and sweet. And, and what's amazing is what I found certainly being in the position that we're in is, is that the people that have made it aren't the jerks in the industry. Like I haven't, I'm, I'm speaking generally. I, there's certainly like two names that come to head where they aren't the most awesome people, even though they're at the top of the industry, but, but for the most often generally, like the, the kind of the jerks in the industry are those that are trying to scratch to be in those positions uh, that I found. And, and I would guess, I would argue that the reason that they're not fulfilling that is because of the jerks. You know, like, like everybody that we've had contact with, that we've had conversation with, have been more than gracious, more than open hearted, more than like wanting to help. That's what that was my biggest learn actually starting the podcast was like there, there's so many people at the top of this industry that are willing to help, you know, and all you have to do is ask. You're talking about talking to people. All you have to do, you, know, you pretty much ask for it, ask for the help and to and, and to show that, that you want the help. Which is which a lot of people have a hard time. Like they want something for nothing, but if you show that you want the help, they're there and willing to help. But you have to kind of prove that you want the help. Yeah. Right. And I feel like think about just the education world in general that we've been a part of. Like when you teach a class and you're like, How's everybody doing? Does anybody have any questions? I would love like love if you ask me. It gives you something to work with. And when everyone just sits there, you're like, <laughs> Now what? <laughs> yeah. So I always, even when I go to a class, which I love going to education, I want to sit in the front row. I want to be the best student. I want to raise my hand and I will make up a question for you just to have banter. Like I will just, um, I guess I'll be the one to ask something and I'll just make it up on the fly just to give them any time. I say late and I will. Yeah. I well, love we've been in those positions before, so you know how that is too. And you, like you said, you realize behind the scenes how willing and open everyone yeah. is to share things, even behind, because it's like we'd be doing model prep. People forget, or people that don't know, you're model prepping with everybody that's there. You might have a little, 
you know, separation divide covering you or dividing you, but everyone's using the same shampoo areas. Everyone's using, you're waiting in line, you know, you're doing all those things. So you learn, you know each other. Everyone is friendly. I've even helped other people working for another company because I needed help holding something. And I'm just back there helping them hold because we all want to help each other, you know? So that, that's the great thing about everything for sure. I mean, like the back rooms are that though. Like it's like Man. it feels like you know, in the in the front of the room, you're on different stages, but in the back room, it's the same stage. Like I've definitely seen people like pop through, like, "Hey, you need got any bobby pins? We just, you know, we just blew through ours, or we didn't do it, or our bag, or or the famous one, our bags didn't make it, which happens all the time in the back oh, room, God, especially you know? nowadays. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it, it's cool that it, it's cool that on that side of the industry, we're here to support. Um, and you know, it, it's it, it's really cool. Even the faces, like you know, Sam, when we did that, when we did press poem friends with sam via he's like listen dude he goes i'm on i'm on everybody's team like you know like like the like i i, I represent redkin and redkin represents me but i'm on everybody's team make no mistake about it you know and and that that was really cool kind of hearing it from him you know like i'm i'm, I'm here for the industry just you know, wants to share the knowledge just wants to share the knowledge okay i need both of you guys on the record to uh to promise that on april 25th that you're going to be in the great state of maryland and uh and and, and be here till at least the 27th and you're going to hang out with us and you're going to be our guest at presley poe and friends what is this? Is this the first time I've announced it online? So February 26th, <laughs> I'm February, sorry, April, April. April, April 26th, 2025, we will be doing the Pressy Poe event, uh, Pressy Poe and Friends event again. Um, we've, uh, if you're listening in, we've, uh, uh, Babelis is on board this year. Uh, we can't talk about the artist quite yet, but, but trust me, you're going to be blown away by the artists that, that are going to be there and, and the experience that you're going to have. Um, uh, Katie and I have yet to figure out a way to talk about Presley Poe and Fent because it's an experience and it's really, 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 really hard to talk about an experience. It's hard to explain. I don't, yeah. I don't, we, I don't we try to reword it each year to just encompass what yeah. it is. That's but... why we need Amanda and Jamie there. Maybe they yeah. can put the weekend into, into wow. words. Jamie can say something very profound for us. Yeah, he turns. He will. He is profound, Dick. As, as, <laughs> I'm being serious. I mean, I kind of think I have to defend Jamie a little bit. Like, I'm going to give you a black eye. Don't, don't talk about my boy, Jamie. No sex. She's like, I think you're about things. <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar, and I do not have a gymnastics competition. Not for myself, for my daughter. Whoop, so, there you go. And look, I don't know if you can see. What? I already did yeah. on there. What? That's cool. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Listen, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, giving us the time today. Thank you for telling us about about the hybrid salon. If you guys have any questions about, you know, how to do a salon at the house or whatever, please reach out to Amanda and Jamie um, or just show up. They'll send you a video how to get there. Um, but but you know, definitely reach out to them um, or even like, you know, how, how, how do you do it as a couple? I think you guys could do a whole coaching thing on how to do it as a couple because there's so many of them uh, in the industry. But maybe that's a series. Maybe that's a series. Uh -oh. I thought about that. A lot. That's mm -hmm. that's awesome. Well, that's a conversation. So if there's other couples that want to come there and talk about it, we can come talk about it. That's amazing. There we go. Really? <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she said, you didn't, you, you didn't, you didn't funnel that through me first. <laughs> oh, I, I want to go to everything. So I, I have like FOMO, you know, so I want to go to every single thing. That's but, you know, I have to. Amanda, Jamie, thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for uh, for for doing your part in the in, in the hair world, and thank you very very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.